The Theory of Political Economy by William Stanley Jevons Chapter 7 Theory of Capital Part 9 Free and Invested Capital I believe that a clear explanation of the doctrine of capital requires the use of a term free capital, which has not been hitherto recognized by economists. By free capital, I mean the wages of labor, either in its transitory form of money or its real form of food and other necessaries of life. The ordinary sustenance requisite to support laborers of all ranks when engaged upon their work is really the true form of capital. It is quite in agreement with the ordinary language of commercial men to say not that a factory or dock or railway or ship is capital, but that it represents so much capital sunk in the enterprise. To invest capital is to spend money, or the food and maintenance which money purchases, upon the completion of some work. The capital remains invested or sunk until the work has returned profit equivalent to the first cost with interest. Much clearness would result from making the language of economics more nearly coincident with that of commerce. Accordingly, I would not say that a railway is fixed capital, but that capital is fixed in the railway. The capital is not the railway, but the food of those who made the railway. Abundance of free capital in a country means that there are copious stocks of food, clothing, and every article which people insist upon having, that in short, everything is so arranged that abundance, subsistence, and conveniences of every kind are forthcoming, without the labor of the country being much taxed to provide them. In such circumstances, it is possible that a part of the laborers of the country can be employed on works of which the utility is distant, and yet no one will feel scarcity in the present.